Well, welcome everyone. I'd like to open this uh, meeting of the Waitley Select Board. Um, the first item on our agenda is about the minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, of the February 16th meeting. Um, do I have any comments or notes on those minutes? We move we approve the minutes. I will second that. Okay, great. I will uh, take a vote then. Um, Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Me? Yep. Okay, great. All right, moving on to the vendor payroll, a uh, vendor and payroll warrants. Are there any comments on those? There were none, so no comments. Oh, there were none. Oh, those are so the ones I signed today are going to show up next week. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Understood. Okay. Um, the third, I've got public comments. So listen to comments from the public related to items not listed on the agenda. Um, in the room, I see two people maybe who yes. are there. Might they be here to talk about something that's not on the agenda? Um, yes. We're, yes, we're wanting to discuss um, Bay State blasting and uh, the aquifer. So I don't know if that's included. We can do that now. Um, if I remember right, it's not, um, I'm, gonna, I'm just looking through the agenda real quick to make sure it's not already an agenda item. I think it was not an agenda item. Um, and so I've got Lisa and Mike there. There were also two people in the room, not in the Zoom part, in the room there as well. Are oh, they, I'm are, sorry. Are they also waiting for public comment? No, I'm not. Uh, JP Kennedy's here. Okay. Only one in the room at the moment. Oh, okay. Oh, that must be something else. It's really hard to tell if it's a person or just a little device in the back. Okay. <laughs> then, uh, then, uh, and and then, uh, I think Lisa and Mike maybe should have their say. Know that in regards to what the concern has been with Bay State blasting and the changes and everything else that they have had going on in the uh, on the property. We understand that Jim has. Hawkins has gone back and forth several times with them trying to figure out what's going on and he's kind of appeased at the moment thinking that because uh, Maxim is not coming in uh, to our understanding and he was told Maxim is no longer coming into lease um, on the property that everything is a status quo. Whereas yesterday they started back up with the dump trucks with Phil and um, I followed them yesterday to see where the material was coming from. And it is coming from a uh, construction site that is going on that, um, that Baltazar Construction is um, in charge of and doing over on Route 9 in Hadley. And so I have film of literally the trucks in the site and getting loaded up as I drove by because I wanted to see where it was coming from. So the concern is, is this is garbage that they cannot reuse on their construction um, job over there. And they are using this site to dump it. And we don't know what's in that dirt and it's up on the mountain and potentially affecting the aquifer for our um, wells that are a quarter mile down the street and um, it's it's starting again and at this point with the change of um, usage it is they're not using it as just a storage site for dynamite which is what their permit allows for it does not allow for a um, a dump site to be used number one and number two it is also being done through a second company whereas it's um baltazar construction is dumping this up there and to my understanding it's bay state blasting that owns the property even though it's the same family yeah. they have two separate companies and in addition to that, you know, with the signage and everything else that is up on uh, up on the building that's up there, one of the things that they have up there, which I know I did not know that they had for a company, is a recycling company. Now, 
what mm. the recycling entails or anything else, I have no idea. I don't know if they're using that up there or if they, because it's their building, they just put sign the sign up on the end of the building. I don't even know if it's still on there, but um, we do also have, um, I yeah. think it was only 11 loads that went up yesterday. But even with that, as the trucks come down off of the hill, they are hitting potholes that they have created in the road, road that they do not have fixed properly. And the noise is um, beyond what it should be. And actually my husband went ahead and got a, um, what is it called? It's a decimal reader. A, there you a go. DD meter, yeah. Yep, and um, so he, he has some video of them coming down and the readings on of that. And now with the frost in the ground, when they hit those potholes, our house literally shakes. I know my mother's house does as well because she has said so. We're sitting on clay here. So it just comes right across the surface with the frost. But, um, you know, with the change in use and with that and everything else, I just, I just like to see whether or not we're going to get after Jim to see what we need to do, how things are going to progress from here. You know, our concern is even though Maxim isn't coming in, they are still abusing the privilege of out of sight, out of mind, because that's what it feels like. And it has since the very beginning. I'm sorry. Else, Could you just give me your names and your addresses, please? Yeah, it's Lisa and Mike Moore. Do you need our physical address or the mailing address? They're two different things. Uh, physical, please. Physical is 73 Chestnut Plain Road. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> well, um, I thank you for coming in uh, and talking about this. Um, you're probably aware, I mean, we, uh, your emails have been forwarded on to the board, members of the Board of Selectmen, and we've, um, we've been keeping up with this as best we can. Um, my understanding is that our mechanism of, of enforcement is through the building inspector, which is, I mean, my feeling is that's a really crappy enforcement mechanism. <laughs> and uh, considering the workload he has. I, I, yeah, and for, for any number of reasons. Um, but I wonder if, um, I think Brian has been the main yeah. person through whom all the, con the conversations have flown. So, yeah. so maybe I'll give Brian a minute to respond if he has anything to respond with. Yeah, he asked us to bring it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I think um, it's a good time for this to be kind of more, um, I don't know, out in, in the out in the open. That's ironic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, in, but, in the sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Because um, it's it, it is you know if if what you're saying is true, and I don't uh, doubt it, um, then we really have to do something about that. That's our that's our water supply. We're we're having people right now study um how the water all the water resources in Waitley because that's something that's going to also be under pressure with climate change um so we it's and it's something everyone in our town values a lot um so maybe I should uh, give Brian a moment um to yeah. that sounds ahead. good um I was seeing if the owl was going to pick me up, but I guess not. Probably oh, there it is. Um, yeah. So, so just to just to really uh, summarize what what Mike said, I, I think this started two Octobers ago. It was it was probably right? I think it was October of twenty two. So a year and a half. Yes. Um, twenty one. It was a year and a half. No, October twenty twenty one. 20. No, it's not tw no, 21. Yeah, 21, it right. Last fall, it was the year before. They've gone through a summer with this. We haven't just okay. been dealing with yeah. this for six okay. months. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so so it's been over a year. Um, and really the, the two issues that that of concern that that we were dealing with, one was the potential for the site to be leased to um, a much larger um, company that deals with explosives. And then the second part of the issue was was the really the fill that was being brought in 
Um, and um, there were emails back and forth. And I think I, I agree with what, what Mike was saying in that. So there are really two issues, right? One, one was the big scary issue of, of well, Maxim, it, Maxim may come in and have these, um, you know, these explosives or these chemicals up there that we don't really know what's up there. And it's going to be this expansion of, of whatever the use was, a significant expansion of the use. Um, that, uh, as, as we were told by, by um, Bay State Blasting, that's, that's not the case anymore, um, at least for now. Um, but then there's the second issue of, of, of the, of the fill that's being brought up there and exactly what, what it is and what does it, con you know, what does it consist of? Um, we had our, I've had conversations with town council. I've had conversations with, um, folks from SDEP about, you know, how the town could approach this. Um, and what we heard from really from, from town council and mass DEP was that, um, that there's, I, I think there's, it really comes through, um, the zoning bylaw and the aquifer protection overlay district, um, mass DEP requires us to have, um, an aqua, uh, essentially an aquifer protection overlay district, um, that relates to the, the recharge areas of the wells. Um, and there's certain requirements that the town, there's certain requirements in state law and the state regulations that the town is required to adopt. And one of them addresses, one of them addresses landfills. Um, and it, it's going to go back to sort of a definition of, you know, what is a landfill within the regulations. Um, it just going back a little bit, when, when Jim Haw Hawkins last went to the site, um, I had asked that there that he tried to figure out the source of that fill. Um, I don't think I've never heard an answer as to as to uh, where that's coming from. Um, I had my own suspicions as to where it was coming from. Um, there, at least, it seems to have confirmed where they're coming from. Um, so, I mean, to me, the issue was really clear. If that's where the fill is coming from, um, the, the question is, is it, quote unquote, clean landfill that, that would, or is it, is it clean fill, or is it the dumping of, you know, construction material that would constitute a landfill within the, within the regulations? Um, so, mm -hmm. The enforcement mechanism, because our because our aquifer protection, because our water regulation protect water protection regulations are within the zoning bylaw, the enforcement mechanism is through the building inspector. Um, but we're we're not getting attention or the results that I think we deserve for the, that the town deserves. Um, so. It, it may be helpful if the if the select board were to take a position or to write a letter or something to, to just sort of try to get more focus on this or refocused on this. Um, that's that's sort of my take on it. It's it doesn't seem like it's gonna it doesn't seem like it's gonna stop. Um, yeah. So have we written um to Jim Hawkins about this already. And no, it wasn't about this. It was about that other situation on um, State Road. Um, so we haven't written to him on this yet. And writing to him on the previous one was, I don't know. So you got a response. So that's- You got a response. That. that was the nicest thing that you could possibly say about that interaction. We Thank got you. A response. <laughs> um, I well, yeah, we do that. We definitely write the letter. I think it should be on the table that we we look into other building inspectors. I think doesn't Sunderland doesn't use the Franklin County building inspection system, right? They have their own building inspector. Is it a full time person? Is it somebody we could share with another town? Um, what are our options here to get a more responsive building inspector? I'm curious who the building inspector answers to. So in terms of actual decisions, 
Yeah. So let's say this, let's say the a letter was written and it says, we think this is an illegal landfill against the zoning bylaw. It's, you're the building inspector and please enforce this. Yeah. He could say, I agree, and he could enforce the zoning bylaw. Or he could say, I did, or no, you're, you're wrong. I think it's fine. Um, that decision is appealable to the Zoning Board of Appeals mm -hmm. by whatever party feels aggrieved. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Zoning Board of Appeals would, it's essentially a, it's it's an appellate role that the ZBA has, right? They're, they're going to look, it's kind of like a judicial role, right? They're going to look at the decision and analyze it and say, we agree or not agree. Decision of the ZBA is appealable to Superior Court or Land Court. Um, from an administrative sort of supervisory standpoint, it's, they're part of the Franklin County Cooperative Inspection Program. Um, so that would be, you know, people at FERCOG, whether that be Bob Dean or Linda Dunlavy. Um, those are the people who, you know, I guess Linda's the executive director of FERCOG. So. And I'm asking because typically, when I wanted to get a response from somebody, I CC it to people that either are they that person reports to or is in some way responsible to, and I make the conversation larger. So it's not just a quiet correspondence. So it's like, you know, we're frustrated about this, and these other parties also know now too. Is that an appropriate thing yeah. to do in this situation? Um, in terms of bringing in the ZBA, probably not, because mm -hmm. um, okay. they need to they need to retain some type of they they should be trying to retain some type of independence. Got it. Because of their role. Yep. Um. So I, I guess the frustrating part about the sort of the regional shared services system is there that you know they hired Jim, they hired the building inspector, meaning Linda. I mean, um, FERCOG, I should say, <clears throat> FERCOG hires the building inspector from an administrative standpoint. Yeah. So, but they don't have, they only have sort of indirect mm -hmm. authority over, you know, he has a lot of, the building inspectors have a lot of independence and a lot of discretion mm -hmm. when they, when they enforce our zoning bylaw. Okay. So, so he's not like mm -hmm. legally answerable to like, the Department of Environmental Protection mm -hmm. or anything like no, that. No, but, and, and then I, I say, I say the, you know, the, the county inspection program, but it's also the select board that decides that, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to use the county yeah. inspection program. So I think that's the Joyce's point about what, what are other towns doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd love to see some option other than what we've got now, which doesn't seem to be working very well. Yeah. Yeah. I've got one other question, possible different avenue to approach this from do we know who the contract was it baltazar is the contractor yeah baltazar no. baltazar construction is the one that is bringing um the fill and everything else in but do from, okay with, uh, from, assuming from, a minute from the site yeah. over in hadley yeah assuming that they're the one that also is the contractor for the road project and Hadley, do we know who their contract is with? Is it with the state? Is it with the town? It would be with MassDOT. It would be with MassDOT. Can we do the MassDOT and say, we suspect there's illegal dumping going on? Because I'm sure it's in their contract that they dump it legally. That there's got to be something there to so take a different approach and try to jeopardize their contract if mm -hmm. the bill turns out to be improperly disposed of no of course i mean i know this is a public meeting and it's all going to be on air but that's like i mean i'm guessing they know if they're breaking the rules and telling them we know that they're breaking the rules gives them time to cover up so that might not be yeah, but they, the they have to move strategy. all that fill back out of where it is <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. they, they, well, I don't know. I don't know exactly how. I mean, what could they come up with to? There, there's you know, over to, 630 loads of uh, dump truck dirt up there. So, yeah. yeah. For the uh, amount of time it took them to get it up there, it would be significant for them to try and get it back out and have it cleaned up because they have created new. They have created new parking lots. 
-hmm. by pulling out logs and the trees. They have logged out trees and they have created from a, um, in which we actually have pictures of that we have shared from what used to be just a road to all of a sudden it's, you know, no longer 12 feet wide. It's now 50 feet wide and, you know, 20 feet deep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. I, go ahead, Fred. Go ahead, Fred. If, if we can make State Department Transportation aware that there may be a breach of their contract, we may be able to get some action from that angle rather than relying on our building inspector to do it. Yeah. And still look at different options for a building right. inspector. Yeah. I, I like the idea of copying <clears throat> people, but I'd, I'd copy Linda Dunlavy on that. I think that they should know if we're really having trouble with the building inspector and unhappy with them. Um, I think we should copy maybe our state reps. Do they know who we should copy at the Department of Transportation um, regarding that particular project? Um, that I like. I don't know who at Department of Transportation would be the right person, and um, but maybe Brian's nodding his head. Maybe he knows how to figure that out. Yeah, um, we could, we could, yeah. Um, Keith may know. Maybe the, the legislature know. And I think it would be a different letter. It wouldn't be a copy of the same letter that was sent to Jim. It would be it would be with a with a different result, right? Uh, or action that we would request. But if we want to leave a paper trail, we probably yeah. want to copy them on the letter to Jim as well. Yeah, but I think that <clears throat> getting the state aware that, that they may have a company in breach of contract, which could cost them future contracts, would certain might well get their atten uh, yeah, yeah, attention. attention. And could get the state's attention too if they've got a contractor that uh would right. look bad if they were doing illegal dumping, it would look bad for the State Department of Transportation that they're doing deals with them. Agreed. So so I think so I think the crux of the issue is what's the fill? What's what what is it consistent? Yeah. Um, if it's quote unquote clean fill, um, I'm not sure that there's I'm not sure that there's much to do, um, much additional to do. Um, but if it's, you know, if it's, if it is, you know, from a construction project yeah. or something that contains, you know. Yeah. You know, Are you yeah. saying because if it's clean fill that it's not a change of use? I don't believe there's any provision in the in the aquifer protection overlay district that would prevent somebody from filling in property. That was and my reading. Yeah. And um, are we able to test it? Like, I, I don't even know how you would do that. Um, I imagine you take samples and you have them. I was, yeah, have this bill get certified as clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, it, that I don't know. Um, okay. And I, I'm sure it's, I would anticipate that it's not like chemical, you know, I, I have no idea. But like chunks of asphalt. Yeah, it, yeah, it, 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 it's it's like chunks of asphalt or concrete okay. or you know other products related to you know the roadway yeah. project, I would think. Right. So like if there's dirt there, you can get soil tested, right? Mm -hmm. For all kinds of things. Um so that yeah. Well, yeah, I guess it, there's a lot we don't know, but it seems like you're are the mechanisms that we have at hand are really related to the the use and then further you're pointing out is that it's about whether this is clean fill which would not mean a change of use or landfill dirty fill so to speak which would mean a change of use and okay if it's asphalt we've got a Haydenville road project which we're going on, which we're doing partly because the runoff from the asphalt on Haydenville Road now isn't clean and it's clean to the reservoir. Mm -hmm. So why would asphalt from Hadley be cleaner than asphalt runoff? Yeah, I... 
No, I, I don't disagree with you, Fred, but I, I just I don't know how it is defined by oh, me, me, people me, who me, define me. landfills fills, right? I'm just making an assumption here that asphalt is, does not necessarily make for clean fill. I I I hope not. <laughs> um yeah. so I'm I'm hearing two letters, one to the building inspector and one to mass Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um and copies to our to our good friends at uh, the FERCOG and um, maybe Natalie and our senator. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as an additional question, if it's not clean fill, does it start to bring in environmental concerns, Conservation Commission or Depar Department of Environmental Protection or anybody who oversees water or aquifers? Uh, yeah. Possibly. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's well. Look at that when we get to it. Yeah. That was just a question. Brian, do you know who the sen senator is now for Hatley? Because whoever the, the state reps are, whoever the state reps are where the project is going on that's generating the garbage mm -hmm. should be notified as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As well as you know, Hadley Select Board, whomever. Okay. Yeah, uh, the Google says that it's Representative Daniel R. Carey of the Second Hampshire District for uh, for Hadley. Okay. And who's the senator? They read through the line, so I I don't know who the yeah. senator is. Uh, Joe uh, Joe Comerford. Okay. Well, yeah, I think. Send these letters all around. And I, I happen to notice that there's someone on the call who might who might, I don't know, be interested in in more information. Digging a little deeper. Digging a little deeper. A muckraker, perhaps, even. I wanted to say, if I might, just for a moment, we have been able to see that there have been chunks of cement and everything else at the top of some of these loads. It's very hard to see and discern between um, pavement and dirt as far as the loads as they go up and everything else. We will do our best to see and get some more pictures of that when it's just a little bit warmer. Um, the cold temperatures are not good for drones at these temperatures. Mm -hmm. But the other thing, too, is if there's something else that you are needing us to do or to keep an eye out for, please just let us know, and we will do the best to help. I, I don't think we will ask you to trespass on their land. <laughs> <laughs> we, you're allowed to air spaces owned by the FAA. Yeah, we, we're allowed to do the drones. Mm -hmm. We haven't, well, I haven't walked up there since last year when I first started having concern with what was going on and the amount of noise that it was creating and realized they were opening up spaces. And then from there, it went straight to the drones. We haven't been up there and we're not planning on it. Hmm. Yeah, they, they put up the gate on the driveway. Yeah. For 30 years. Okay. <laughs> I have a key to it or I used oh. to have a key to it. Yeah because they were having problems getting drivers up the hill and they let me have a key. So when they needed to let somebody up there, instead of all their workers being able to go up, I was here and I was letting people up. So that's what it okay. was. If they gave you a key, you they arguably giving you permission to go onto the property. Yeah. I would at this point, I would say probably not. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. Okay. Well, Mike and Lisa, do you have anything more you want to add to this? Um, no, not right now. I think that's everything. We really appreciate the time and the attention to this. And um, and hopefully, number one, hopefully it's clean fill and then we just deal with the rest. And if it's not, then we get it sooner rather than later and get this figured out. Yep. Thank so, you. Thank you for uh, thank you. taking the time today. Thank, thank you. you. And all the other days that you've taken the time. <laughs> Anywhere. <laughs>
Okay. Um, let's see, before I go on to the next item, is there anybody else here who has uh, something to say under public comment on items that are not on the agenda? Because I see in the room, there's now several more people. Fred, is anybody there looking like they want to speak? No, no one looks like they want to talk. No, 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 okay. no. All right, well, let's I think most of them want to talk about water. Okay. We got, yeah, we got some water and we got some, <gasps> some utility poles. So um, time for then the public hearing. Um, I'd like to reopen the public hearing that we post um, postponed, is that the right word? Or continued, excuse me, yep, yep. from our last meeting on the 16th as uh, a petition to install and maintain underground lines for transmission of electricity from Western Mass Electric Company, DBA Eversource in the area of the intersection of Rupert Road and Straits Road in Waitley, Massachusetts. So it is now here. open. There's nobody here from, from the utilities. Oh man, I shouldn't have opened that up then, huh? No, well, I mean, you should, because we should probably continue it to the next meeting. Okay, well, if they're not here, then then maybe it's open now and we can continue it to our next meeting. If, they, yeah, if they're not here, I'm not sure there's, I mean, we could just close it and have them start a new one next time, I suppose. I continue this one to the next meeting. Was that a motion? Yes. I'll second that. Yeah, we need to have oh. a, a <laughs> date, time, and place certain. Okay. Um, next our next meeting, I think, is March 14th. Which is continue this until March 14th at 6 15. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of continuing to March 14th at 6 15, uh, then, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Fred. Yes. Julie. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, now we can talk about water. Um, here's our, uh, I think I believe our water commissioners are here to discuss um, installation of water meters at town buildings and yes. some other aspects of the relationship between the water department enterprise fund and other town finances. And we're only a little bit late. So thank you for your patience. Uh-oh, we, we lost Brian. We can't continue without Brian. <laughs> yeah. Um, I imagine that uh, that some some of the people there are are from the Water Commission. If, if you can move a little bit closer to the tables, um, I'll be able to see who you are a little bit better. And so will anybody else who's on Zoom. I would have just sit at the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sit at the table. Yeah, yeah, if there's, if there's empty chairs there, that would be great. Or just bring chairs up if there aren't enough. Okay. Now we're just waiting for Brian. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Oh. What am I supposed to do? Well, we just feel lost without you, Brian. That's all. Wayne was going to talk about everything. Wayne refused to come to the table. Oh, Wayne. Okay. He can reach the table from where he's sitting. <laughs> okay. Well, how do we want to start here? Um, might the water commissioners start and uh, start first with the water meters discussion? I'll give a summary of it. Yeah. Um, okay. So really quickly, when the water department was first created, there was no enterprise fund. So town funds were town funds. Um, revenue went to general revenue. Um, expenses were paid out of general revenue. Everything was together. Um, back in 19... 
1986 was when the enterprise fund was created no no that's oh when that's when the water department was formed. Yes. when was the enterprise fund 19 five or six years ago it oh, was it was, it was no, 2000 be something yeah all right so we'll say 2000 something the enterprise fund was created for the water department an enterprise fund really is a separate checking account it's a mechan it's an accounting mechanism mm -hmm. Whereas um, all the revenue that's generated by the water department goes into that checking, goes into that account. It's separate from the other finances of the town and expenses are paid out of that account. So the idea is similar to any of our other of our revolving funds, right? Revenue comes in, expenses get paid out. Um, so there's the water department is is separate financially um so i mean but so so what we would like here i i think is it would be nice if it was just a clean sort of a clean split right the water department pays for everything out of the enterprise fund and then the town pays for whatever the town is doing out of you know the general fund and the general fund revenue but it, it didn't happen that way when it when it was when it was formed, right? Um, so one of the one of the the leftovers of 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 that was that the the town has not been paying um, for water it uses in town buildings, right? So um, so the it, it's essentially the water the revenue raised by the water department through um you know through the um the user you know the user rates the rates in any of the user fees are essentially supporting the town buildings um so the water users are 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 supporting the water at town buildings essentially is the situation that we are left with um so that's that's really how this came about um, some buildings have existing meters. Some are going to get upgraded meters. Um, some it may or may not make sense to install the meters now, um, or it, it may be complicated, and we can talk about those more more in detail. But I, I think sort of the 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 first discussion is probably about the meters. You know about the the town paying for its own water. I think that's the request from the water commissioners. Um, and, you know, there's other things related to sort of the separation of the water department um, operations as opposed to the town operations. Um, the, the, the water department truck is used to plow town lots. Um, we, the town general fund pays the, the, the wages of Wayne when he plows town lots. But there's wear and tear on the truck, and there's use of the truck um, that's currently not compensated for um, to the water department. Um, what other what other issues am I missing? Um, and there's just sort of been this that's that's them, and this is us, and we're separate. When in reality, it's just really a separate checking account. Um, the water department doesn't have legal standing outside of the town it is the town of Wheatley. it's a department it has a separate checking account um and you know it, it's i've seen it used in the past where you know you sort of use the argument one way or the other depending on how whoever wants to argue for what you say well that's the enterprise fund and we don't pay that and the enterprise fund can say well we're the enterprise fund we don't do that and it's just it's been going back and forth for for a while um but um, I think in terms of fairness and it seems like the town in general should be paying for water that's used at the town buildings. Um, well, you know, about what basically it comes down to is every user on the system should be paying for the water they use. Mm -hmm. The springs that use it at the town policies, every, everybody's a user. And too many use, you know, that's free water. It's in the, in the universe of, Discussing it with DEP, we call it a counter for the water. Yeah. Water leaking out of a pipe, you don't know where it's going because you don't make any revenue for it. He's not measuring um, it, yeah. 
So that's a simple, that's a simple, that's really a simple thing. And metering the building is simply so you, you're paying your fair share. That's all. Other than that, it's the enterprise fund. There's a new guy here. We've been in town three years. I'm like, whoa, okay. it confused me just on because I have over 30 years in the water business doing Vermont, Massachusetts, but mainly in Vermont and back in New Hampshire. And you know how you things varies from town to town and operation to operation. But that's the basic behind it, is the users pay and if yep. you give it away. The other side of it becomes confusing to me as a new guy with the with the, the funding is is we are now in the process of putting together a capital improvement plan so we can look 20 years down the road the system how it's going to be and the revenue we need to make to pay for it all and therefore adjust the rates and come up with a rate structure not just a straight flat you know so much per thousand gallons but a rate structure that has a little more fairness in it and allows people allows us to cover all those expenses not just the year to year operational costs but the long term planning part too and then there's acquisition of grant money for funding which is not easy for us to get, but when you look at these long-term things, you need some money that's going to come into the town's ability to get us, you know, for the town, some grant funds in order to pay for things that we need. And we're not talking a little bit of money. You can be talking a couple million. It's a lot of money over time. I'm sorry, what's your name? John Luca. Thank you. Well, I mean, in principle, I don't have any problem with the town paying for their water. I assumed we were doing that all along. And it, this past couple months is the first I'd really heard about it um, not being the case. I think, I guess the next question is, um, how much are the meters? Do we have a, enough money to pay for those? Um, where does that money come from? And uh, uh, if there's, it, Brian alluded to, there might be some building that maybe isn't worth metering um or like i'd be interested in finding out what uh what that is it might just be that there's some place where there we know there won't be a significant usage for whatever reason i'm guessing but um what what do you think julie what do you think um fred well i think the town should absolutely have all the buildings neither to pay the water department for the water it's using and as far as where the money come from, I think it's an excellent use of ARPA money uh, to cover whatever we need to cover. And I would agree with Fred and um, probably a, a sort of dopey, dopey question is why is it separate? Why is it separate anyway? And would it be prudent to knit everything together so we don't have this over here, over here, you don't, I don't situation. Or is well, that just more complicated I, than, that, than needed? I would have an issue with that because <laughs> not, not everyone in the town is served by the water department. Right, we're not. Like, yeah. um, and Indirectly, you maybe you have what? Indirectly, everybody is more directly here. Do you remember why it was going? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, remember that's, that's why the meters right, at the school. Like, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm talking about not every homeowner has access to the water system. Right, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 think, I think it's better like, that they have the separate structure rather than general town money, which everyone pays into, you know, you and I that are not on the water system uh, should not be paying into the water system run by supporting yeah. their operations. Oh, I'd love to be in on this conversation too. <laughs> You were asking why was the enterprise fund formed? Yeah, yeah. Well, originally the town took out a loan when we originally built the water system and everything, I think for 1.4. So the town was paying back the loan, you know, from the taxes that we gained by having the water system. Mm. And once the loan was paid off, the selectmen at that time and the finance company at that time wanted us to form, you know, an independent department. And that's how this came. Mm -hmm. So the independence of the department means that the enterprise is strictly a checkbook. It's strictly a checkbook. Yes. Well, no, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a financial structure. It's not yeah. just a checkbook. It's, That's it, 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 it's, it's confusing, but it's not, I don't see it as just a checkbook. It's the way the finances of the water department are structured is that all the money goes in 
It's right. an accounting mechanism. An accounting mechanism. Okay. Um, and that wouldn't and, be possible if it was considered a department of the town. Uh, well, it is a department of the town. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somehow. But it has a separate revenue stream. Yeah. Uh, right. From their it's, income not that, paid for it's not paid. Revenue. It's not paid out of taxes. Out of real estate yeah. taxes paid oh, out of okay. some communities have um, like transfer station enterprise funds for yeah. the operation of transfer station. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's typically set up where there's a where there's sort of a distinct revenue source coming in for a for you know a defined operation, um, some some paid people have steward enterprise funds that's paid for by a certain part section of the populace. In, yeah. in a sense, user fees that the people who are using it. That makes a little more sense. Thank you. Right. Not um, but Lynn wanted everyone to know that the town office is here, paid for water, but the, the town, town office is there. Yeah, the so town office town building. Because right. this one, this building was built as the regional library, library system, so it was treated as a, you know, still yeah. much like as a private. Yeah. Private it, well, the school has a meter and it's not being read, so you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just to just to clarify, then there's you're saying the elementary school has a meter that we're not paying attention to. Is yeah. that right? Where you, there'd be the center school. There would be the town hall. There would be the library. Am I missing anything else in the center of town? Oh, of course, garage, police department, fire department. Oh, oh that the Christian Lane, of course. Um, so not in the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those are um, new acquisitions to the new acquisitions to the department right through the water district. Yeah. So we did pay the water district for water in the center of town. Yeah. And are those, so did those get meters as a part of the um, being attached to the district? They would have been upgraded. Yeah, right? they, yeah, they had meters. They just got upgraded. Okay, so it's the center of town ones do have meters, and the places that don't have meters are the like the Christian Lane places, the yeah, like the some, some, some of the buildings have them. So who needs one? Yeah, who needs one? Want me to read the list here? Yeah, court, yeah. Library, right? What? Library needs a new meter. Yeah, the library, library, fire station. Fire station. Highway garage. Has one, but needs one. Early E. Early E, and then and the cemetery. That's complete the cemetery. One, two, three, four, five. But you think two of those, it might not make sense to do it. When we had a meeting, I think you guys decided the cemeteries for what does such small amount of use that the water probably actually gets used there. What it would cost to put a meter there would just it just doesn't wouldn't make sense. What is it used for there? Is it for watering? Yeah, just things people plants? fill up but I'll get the lot of water there. Yeah, okay. So they're not like watering the lawn there. They're people are watering maybe individual flowers. Yeah, just to water the plants around the greystone. Would that be a flat fee or something like a just an agreed upon like? Well, it's kind of what the commissioners were thinking. And you guys, yeah, you guys could come up together. Just yeah, a flat fee for every the twice a year we read it. It's X amount. But yeah, you know. Yeah, I think if you, you were to negotiate the what would the cemetery commissioners and gone for the number. Yeah, I just we, can't see. You know, I mean, it it costs somewhere in the range of probably three thousand dollars to put a meter in at each cemetery. Hmm. Let's see. I see your point. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put a you have to put a manhole in the ground so it would freeze. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. That, uh, yeah. No, so since it would, I assume that money would be come out of cemetery budget. To, or at least it's, it's moving the it, shelves around. Yeah, it, it, it's a, it's it's an accounting question, right? But I think yeah. that the negotiation between you and the cemetery commissioners of what you know the usage is and what would be a fair amount for reimbursement, right. and I have no doubt you would honor whatever deal you made. Yeah. 
Um, is there uh, another town building that you were thinking of knocking off the list? So, uh, the highway sorry. garage has one meter inside on the little line, but not on the big, on the two inch line on the standpipe on the outside. Which that one again, when we were talking about it, it'd have to be a good size pit put somewhere in the middle of the driveway to fit the meter. Mm. Chief is saying there isn't one at the police station either. No, we got taken out. Yeah, but that's, that's easy enough to put in. The smaller lines are easy to put in. I think the thing with the highway garage is if, we pay to put this in, and then five years, four the years from now, or five years from now, but there's going to be a highway garage or, or something. So, so I did talk about how we just collaborate with a little crap. Right. Sure. So the, we're not, nobody's trying to make, make many bucks. I mean, the object of the game, if you look at that public water systems and, and the whole way it's being looked at by the regulatory agencies, the feds into the state, they want us to, op to operate like we were a business. That you're taking enough revenue to meet your expenses and your future costs mm -hmm. without having to borrow, if possible. Of course, financially borrowing sometimes more economical than not. Then an interest rate specific side point. The the whole thing with the checking account uh, fund makes it kind of hard to manage the money because you know if we if we ideally you take in enough revenue, pay all your expenses plus a little surplus every year to carry any emergency bond stuff and a capital reserve account so you have money to. to the current interest to bring back into then we have to do a big thing like putting a new half mile of new pipe or something like that or you know or repairing the storage tanks could be expensive finding a new well that sort of stuff mm -hmm. so we're looking ahead and trying to look at ways to finance the whole thing the enterprise fund is going to just look, move it makes it a little more complicated this in my head but making sure that the revenue is coming in from all sources is important yeah so back to the original question yeah. of should the town buildings pay? I'm in agreement. Yeah. yeah. That was any doubt the town yeah. should pay. Yeah. It should pay for the ability to pay for its water. <laughs> so should we work out a, a specific proposal for the for both the select board and water commissioners to agree to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, um, just talking yeah. about cemeteries and how and have different ways to treat all these different things. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I guess what what we might, I mean, we can't, we don't have something to vote on tonight, but I think your feedback from us is generally, yeah, we're not opposed to putting in meters and paying for the water the town uses. Um, you've brought up a couple of places where it sounds like we should negotiate a flat negotiate a flat fee rather than put in a meter. Um, so if we could just summarize that in a memo or like a memorandum of understanding, if that's the right thing to use, um, then uh, we'd have something we can vote on that's that's concrete. Does that make sense as the next step? Yeah, yeah we just need something something that is concrete. That gives us an amount of money to authorize and specifically for what? All right. Yeah, we can't, we, we, we can't authorize as much money as you need to put in meters. We need a proposal you know, that says we're going to appropriate X thousand dollars for these, for meters in the you know, specific places. We will crunch getting revenue this year because of the revenue of meters because of that software. So that that address, I think that's a path forward in terms of the, the town paying for its own water. Are there other things that we want to discuss? Um, <clears throat> long truck, use on by truck. So I was thinking about this and so, and I'll also just remind the board. So each year the, the enterprise fund, the water department enterprise fund pays what are, what are called overhead costs. Um, 
for um, various work that physicians do in town that are funded, that are that are paid with the general fund typically. Mm -hmm. um, so they pay for a certain percent of the treasurer collector's time. Um, they pay a certain percentage of, of insurance. Um, you know, there's a there's a whole list that in their budgets that that we typically see every year. Um, does it make sense to to sort of have an offset column that that like use of the truck is a is an offset of the overhead costs? Or that would be easier. I think that would be the easiest way to do it. But unless we want to, unless you want to pay, unless the enterprise fund wants to pay whatever thousands of dollars in overhead costs, and then the town writes you a check for the use of the truck. I mean, the less people are it seems like there would just be some <laughs> offset there, but I, I don't think it's just an idea. I don't know what discussion the commissioners have. Had. We just have to come up with a number for how much the truck is worth per hour. Hmm. You're already paying Wayne for his time in the bottom. Yeah. It's just a matter of the truck. I forget what this last truck cost us. It is isn't this one. In terms of accounts or technically shouldn't that be coming out of Keith's Winter Road's budget? Um, I'm not sure. That's a good question. I'm not sure if you can use the um, parking lots for Winter Road. So I'm not positive. Um, but it's we it's something we can look into. And we do have a Winter Roads. I don't know. Parking lot, so like town right. buildings count as roads. Paved service. <laughs> I think we're talking state regulations. Yeah. So you never know. Yeah. So why don't we put that as part of the the proposal of the yeah. memo? I'm <clears throat> understanding. The other thing is going back, and no one knows how long. The town has plowed the church, and no one knows how that started. But that's another issue that should we be there plowing the church, and we receive nothing for that. I can guess how it started, but I, I <laughs> well, I mean, stories, but <laughs> yeah, I, I see, I see, I see my town's plow trucks plow in the congregational church too, but that doesn't make it right. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I think, I think that's discussion for the board, and it's only for us to discuss, but, but not relevant to the water department. That might be in a future agenda item. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we might have, there might be different stakeholders that might want to have a conversation. So. Is the church knitted in with the town administration or is the church a separate entity? A separate entity. Yeah. I think if, if it, my guess is that everything was just commingled because. People who ran the town probably went to the church. So mm -hmm. that's sure. how it would, well, yeah. would be my guess. Yeah. And, and yeah. it was somebody had a plow, I'm going to plow and plow it out and for the Sunday service. And go, going back to the 18th century, we wouldn't have a town if we didn't have a church. Yep. So we can discuss that. Okay. All right. Do, do we need anything more on the um, uh, water commissioner's discussion? Not from here. Not from here. Sounds like your thirst has been quenched. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. I, I'd like to put forward to you, though, because select person with his next Tuesday, 7th, Drift is coming. Yeah, yeah we, have, we have a meeting scheduled to next Tuesday, the 7th. Uh, and here to get a quick look at the first draft of our capital improvement plan, which they've done. And it would be helpful if 
you know, somebody who impossible to come to get an idea what kind of stuff we're looking at. I'm, the your, the, I'm theoretically your liaison, so I'll yeah. be there. What time is it again? 10, 10 o'clock. Is it here? Yeah. Because yeah. okay. there's maps that spread out. You get, you get, you get help you to learn the system a little bit if you don't know how it's put together. Uh, and look at the cost we're looking at down the road. And why we, we're kind of desperate to get get, get a nice rake structure set up so we make sure we have enough revenue to pay. Because I don't know what happens when we're short of change. We have to come to the select and say, we need money. Brian, would it, would there be a problem legally or accounting wise to set up for the water department a separate capital fund? Such that they would you know, take money out of the enterprise fund and put it into a designated. Oh, but they take it out of. I mean, it's just because of whether the enterprise fund set up for your room. See, we, do we kind of do that now. Kind of. Kind of. No, he's, he's, he's right. I, I, I'm, no, I'm not. It's not like it's, it's one look. capital fund. It's. Yeah, you know, I mean, we have X amount set aside for a generator. We have X amount set aside an account to replace the pickup. Mm -hmm. I think the other one is. But in, in accounting terms, what, where is it? Those are special articles. You'll see, they show up under the. Right. Okay, okay. The, so, so they already exist. It's just a question of. Right. In, in the. Clarifying. Yeah, the kicker of the whole thing is that. Out of there to use it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. If they can go in, we can get it out of the crowbar or somewhere. <laughs> it's like I can go to the bank and pull money out of my savings account and write a check, but you can't do that in this operation. And uh, it's it's a little bit strange because you know the whole town votes on enterprise funds expenses and appropriations, except you know what it right. Yep. It's, yeah, it's not a perfect system, but it's what we have. So Okay, well, if if those funds exist already, then you've got your mechanism for capital, you know, for capital set asides. Yeah, I think that will be fabulous when that's set up. Yes, a long time coming, so that's yeah. good. But it's also I mean, when I came on board, we look at we have rules and regulations that were written up now that they're endorsed. So we gotta kind of you know make sure we've got stuff in, in place to make it fair and, and accessible. And what do you do when somebody doesn't pay their bill for two years? You want to just stop leaning on the house? So how, how how do you manage that? Mm -hmm. so if people aren't paying, why are you providing water? It's a hard, it's a hard. This is my my experience with the whole thing is people, you know, I know this town was very appreciative, people got it. It was a condition issues. I was living in New Hampshire working in the field then. I remember the, the instance when it happened. Here in Sunderland and Hadley, everybody had this issue with agricultural contamination of this water sources. And it was a big deal to resolve it. And now here it is. And 30, 40 years later, people forget. And I've had old timers look at me and say, that's a free resource. I didn't have to pay for it. And like, well, you pay the bills for pulling it out of the ground, treating it, and coming around. <laughs> it's not free, but it's cheap. Oh, okay. I, I appreciate the discussion, but I, I guess I, I'd like to see. If we're really done, I think we're done. We're going to wait for something in writing to to vote on, and uh, we've got a whole other page of agenda to get through tonight. Yep. So I'm wondering if if there's something important that you want us to hear now, please bring it up. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So uh, item six on the agenda is really mostly a reminder. It's a COVID-19 that uh, we have rapid tests available at town offices, perhaps at the library as well. So anybody Which, out there who needs a rapid test, don't pay for it. Stop by for Sandy Lane and pick some up. Okay. Um, and then item seven is old business. Um, so we have first item, which I think we started on a little bit last time and knew we would come back to today, is to discuss next steps with the Waitley Center School, um, because our insurance renewal is coming up, and the Historical Commission has met in the meantime um, since our last meeting, and they may have some input for us. 
So let me turn that over to Brian. Um, yep, they did meet. Um, and um, we got Donna. The board was sent a letter from um, Donna as chair of the Historical Commission. So um, if she wants to sort of summarize that, I think that would be good. Um, sure. Sorry, reaching behind me to find said letter. Um, mm -hmm. it, Joyce, uh, uh, Julie, oh. Fred, have you read the letter? Or I, I want to know how much detail to go into. I oh. read it. I, I've read it, but if you can summarize it for sure, yeah, if you can summarize it, that would be good. Sure, sure. Well, we um, we have. We've made, I guess, five or six recommendations. These are not in any way final because, you know, our discussion started a week and a half ago. But um, we've now confirmed that we, uh, the Historical Commission is unanimous in suggesting that our next step should be, our next step as the town should be to issue an RFP for sale of the building. Um, we believe that the RFP should include as a condition of sale a preservation restriction on the exterior of the building. Uh, and that would be less restrictive than the one that has been placed on the town hall, which restricts exterior, interior, and the property on which the town hall sits. Um, and as part of that, we've had a couple of conversations with some other towns. You know, everyone's wrestling with this problem, what to do with vacated municipal buildings. And with the folks at the Mass Historical Commission. And what we'd like to do is come back to you with some. Um, templates, examples of what might work, but you need to tell me by when you need those. Um, so sh shall I go on? Should we just park that as a question? Mm -hmm. um, you have already, um, with uh, the uh, RFP for the lease, included um, a provision about protecting the milk bottle and presumably the tiny piece of land on which it sits. And we believe that should be made a condition of any future sale. Um, you might be interested, just trying to keep the letter not, that the milk bottle is not only important to the people who live in Waitley and everyone who says, oh, Waitley, that's the town with the milk bottle. The milk bottle is uh, on the Smithsonian art inventory, which um, means someone else has noticed that it's a kind of wonderful piece of public art. Um, and I'm embarrassed to say, I don't actually know who did that, <laughs> you know, but um, there it is. We um, note that the fact that the center school is what is called a contributing building, in other words, an important building in the National Historic District, gives it certain um, advantages in terms of funding, uh, both eligibility for grants, but also some exemption from what you will all know, of course, is the terrible stretch energy code. You know, we can be a little more. Um, and some waivers of ADA compliance. And we say what, of course, you know, if you've read the visioning committee's report that um, whoever owns um, the building would be eligible for CPA support for some forms of historic preservation. Uh, we are very encouraged that Bob O'Beer who bought the Blue School has now gotten his historic uh, tax credits from the state um, we, the Historical Commission, did some work with him, and Brian did a lot, what, like four years ago, wasn't it, Brian? Um, to help him make his, five years, and um, help him make his case, but that's going to allow him now to move forward. Um, and so we imagine the same would be true for someone who bought this building. Um, and we're particularly interested in, uh, we updated the list of grants that, for which uh, this building could be eligible and appended it to the letter. And the one that is new to us, which sounds very good, is Mass Development's Underutilized Properties Program, which mm -hmm. could support free development and infrastructure work. And the building needs infrastructure work. So we want to work with you and work on behalf of the town. We want a solution that will save the building um, relieve the town of the carrying costs um, and, you know, let us move forward on this. 
That's basically what the letter says. <laughs> yep. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah, I think we want to get to an RFP as soon as we can for yeah. the building. And thank you for all the work you put into yeah. this and, you know, previous work that you've put in. Um, You're welcome. Visioning and putting together um, funding sources, et cetera. Well, the, the visioning committee, there was only one member of the historical commission on the visioning committee. It was Judy Marvin. Mm. And the, I mean, it's a nice long list of people, and I, I was pleased when it uh, was created because there were a number of people on it who are not the same old suspects um, who yeah. found this an interesting project. So I feel I'm certainly going back to the uh, centuries of our lives that we gave to saving the town hall, I, I feel that there's a nice pool of all of us. <laughs> There's a nice pool of interested, capable people out there. Um, and it's already been four years, so it's time to do something, right? Yeah. Brian, what would next steps be here? Um, well, it, it sounded like the Historical Commission wants the opportunity to provide some um historic preservation restriction template type documents is that right yeah i think so because the one that we have for the town hall which brian and i both know all too well <laughs> is just too much um in my opinion um and uh and the other thing that i would like to do and just didn't have time you know in the week is to pick up the phone and talk to people at some of these other smaller towns that have managed to solve problems. Um, Cause it, I think um, talking to towns that have town staffs the size of ours and not enormous staffs and buildings of this size and not, you know, 60,000 square feet buildings that are in some ways easier because they're more option would be useful. So I, 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 I would welcome just a little bit of time because of, you know, figuring out who we should talk with and then getting together with them will take a little bit of time. But I'm meaning, like, I'm meaning a month at most, not, you know, not years. Yeah, I mean, in terms of putting the RFP together, I think it would be not that heavy of a lift. Um, yeah. Okay. So, but Brian, do, do you think you may I ask you a question? Do you think you've had enough conversation with potential developers who might be interested in sale? I, I know this is from a conference. I, you know, some years ago I went to a conference just to talk about our town hall process, and I had the impression that the towns that have been successful have done a lot of behind the scenes work with potential investors beforehand and gotten their advice and whatnot. I, I know you did some of that, but do you think we've done enough of it? Um, so the two people that I, I've talked to two different individuals since actually since the end of the, the RFP for the for the lease. Um, and one of them I, I, I helped tour the building. Um, and um, I think there's I think there's interest in. Um, I think there's interest in in using the property for housing. Um, I, I think that's what both of them would be interested in doing. Um, I think it's a lot, right? It's a lot cheaper to. It, it's a lot less of an expensive project, um, especially in terms of ADA, um, ADA codes and things yeah, like that. Yeah, you don't have any legal requirement to make apartments accessible as long as you have a. An egress, an egress that is safe, right? Uh, I think the requirements are less. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but yeah, uh, especially if it's if it's if it's a private. I, I think I don't know for sure, but you know, one of the one of the individuals was talking about just having it as a, a private residence. Um. Mm. So. Yeah. 
Um, do we happen to know when we sold the blue school, um, there was probably some kind of a preservation restriction on it. And that might be a one place to go for a model. No, uh, unless there we is, didn't have. There is no preservation restriction oh. on the blue school, and and we didn't sell it. The the frontier regional the school district owned it. The town didn't own it. Um, but, but oh, that's I, right. We own the land next door. That's right. Right, right. Okay. right. The field and the yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> yes, there was and some. There was system. some kind of convoluted thing. Uh, now, thank you for reminding me. Right, yeah. right, right, right. But um, uh, Judy, with her planning board expertise, reminded me that when we were talking, I guess in our meeting last night, that um, they will need. Uh, Bob O'Beer will need us, us, the historical commission, to pass to recommend. Um, the adaptive reuse, we passed the adaptive reuse bylaw a few years ago and um, because they're a non-conforming lot. And uh, I mean, we will do that, obviously. They just haven't had to ask for it yet. And she, she mentioned that he's already applied for a special permit or started the process. Sorry, this is not what I do. So I'm not being particularly articulate about it. But the main point is no, that is not where we can turn for an example, but we won't have trouble finding examples. Okay. Do you think we can get something to, to vote on by like, April 11th? I think we have April 11th meeting. Oh, sure. Oh. Yeah. I, I mean, barring, you know, some great objection <laughs> that are right. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, no, that would that would be that would be great. Really super. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Yeah, that's a good target date. Okay. Uh, Never mind. Choice. Um, I'm wondering, is there anything more we want to discuss on that tonight? The insurance renewal presumably has to happen because that's not going to, nothing's going to happen in the, uh, before that bill is going to come due anyway. Um, when, when does that do? Uh, renews is early April. So if, if actually the board's willing, it would probably be good to have a motion to renew that. I move we renew the insurance on the center school. I'll second it. All right, great. Uh, let's take a vote then. Fred? Yes. Judy? Julie? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay. Um, good. Well, I feel like we've we've made progress on this. And but when I say we, I include the historical commission and Donna and all your work. <laughs> in this time and I appreciate how much thought you all put into that and look forward to uh, the the meeting likely in April where we we may have some more to talk about. That sounds great. Um, yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank all you. right. Thank, Thank you, you, Donna. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Joyce, can I suggest that if we're done with that, we move up the uh, the personnel Matters just because we got people sitting here. Oh, okay. Um, rather, rather than having them sit through next 35 or they can go road updates. Okay. Um, That's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so are you One saying six. um item Three. 7C basically? Seven, yeah, thanks. Move 7C up. The second 7C because I messed up the agenda. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at the one that has revised in red on it. Is that the up to date one? Yeah, there's two number seven. sevens on that though. There's two number sevens. Oh, okay. the second number seven, yeah. new business. For shame. I guess <laughs> seven is really just business, I guess. Um, so the second seven C, to review, discuss, and vote the following appointments if necessary. Uh, so they may be interconnected, but it's treasure collector. We need an uh, interim or a permanent treasure collector given today was Lynn's last day. We need an assistant treasurer collector, an assistant town clerk, 
a fire chief and a community development administrator. And we'll get to as many of those today as we are in a good position to get to. So if I can suggest that we talk fire chief first only because that's the only one that's not interconnected with the others. Mm. All, all Would you like others. to do that? Okay. Let's uh, talk about the fire chief. I understand we've got one person recommended to us. Um, and uh, oh, I can pull up the the resume um, right here. Um, and that was Mr. John Kennedy. Um, I, I can tell you, screen, screening committee met and recommended J.P. Kennedy for the position of fire chief. Um, and there's not, nothing I see in here that tells me you guys, I mean, I, I, I think he looks good. Um, I don't know what your other candidates look like, but he, this guy looks pretty good to me. I would agree. They, they look like the empty seats in this room. <laughs> <laughs> he strong armed everybody else out of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe this can be quick. Yeah, and this appointment will be effective on the on the retirement of the current chief, um, which I believe. So this appointment should be effective June seventeenth, okay, uh, twenty twenty three. The only thing I would want to add is to talk to JP and make sure that you talk to John Hannum and work out the transition between yeah. you, you know for who's going to do what or. You know, between now and June 7th. In the coming months, sure. That's yeah. certainly something we can talk about. Right. So when there's a fire on June 16th, <laughs> at 11.58 p.m. Well, I'm, I'm not concerned about the yeah. fire. I think the, the fire, who's in charge? The fire department will take care of the fire. So if there's a bill to pay. <laughs> is there an enterprise? <laughs> we'll take care of all the bills. All right. No, okay. So are we looking for movement on this? Uh, I, I move that we hire John P. Kennedy as the fire chief, new fire chief for the town of Wakely, effective June 17, 2023. I second that. Okay, well, let's take a vote then. Uh, Julie. Yes. Brad. Yes. Me. Yes. All right. Welcome to town, John. Okay. All right. Thank you. I look forward to the opportunity and... Uh, should be a great experience. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much and for your patience waiting. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> You're going to hang out for the rest of this because it's, uh, you know, it's exciting. It might be the entertainment value of Western Massachusetts tonight. <laughs> so, okay. And then, um, okay. So, shall we go back to the tangled web of treasurer collectors and town clerks? And, um, <laughs> Community development might be yeah. easier. <laughs> well, um, I don't have a recommendation for community development tonight. So, oh, okay. scratch. Um, see how easy that was. Yeah. <laughs> My understanding is you're making progress. You're just not ready on that one yet. Correct. Yep. yep. Um, have applicants. It's, I need to do some follow-up conversations. Like progress. Okay. Yep. Can I share my angled web chart? Yes. Oh, sure. So, um, so what this is showing is showing uh, the left hand side under current. That would have been well. That is, um, well, at least today because we had a retirement today. Um, <laughs> Prior to four o'clock, this is what and this is what this is what our office arrangement was, um, and we have um, Lynn is officially retired for the next well, however long we want to drag this conversation out, um, but we'll stay retired. Um, and retirees under Mass Law can work, I think, up to eighteen hours um, in the public sector and still stay retired. Um, so we have had, uh, myself, Lynn, Amy, and Amy have had discussions for days and days um, trying to figure out um, what would be best for the operations of the town, what people were willing to do, um, and really, you know, how, you know, what was best moving forward. 
Um, so under the proposed is what we have come up with. Um, I'm going to back up for one second. Um, there were two meetings of the um, Treasurer Collector Screening Committee. Um, the committee interviewed two applicants um, and have a recommendation to the select board that uh, Amy Schrader um, be hired as the next treasure collector for the town of Waitley. So that's the recommendation that the select board, you know, make that offer. Um, so what does that mean going forward? Um, obviously, Amy, I'm going to just say last names because it's easier. Um, obviously, Amy Schrader is uh, the current elected town clerk of Waitley. Um, so what's being proposed here is that Amy Schrader would be appointed as the treasurer collector. It is a 30 hour per week position. Um, Lynn has offered to um, stay on as the assistant treasurer collector at 18 hours a week. I'm, I'm gonna go back and talk about each of these. Um, so um, uh, what we're proposing is that Amy Schrader would remain as town clerk. Amy's an elected official, so it's within Amy Schrader's right to um, remain as town clerk or not remain town clerk. Um, so there's, there's no prohibition against holding both jobs. Correct. In fact, uh, Lynn held both jobs for many, many years. Yep. Um, and each each three years, um, the town clerk position is up for re-election. Um, so what also what we're proposing is that um, Amy Lavalley would move um, into the assistant town clerk role at 18 hours per week. Um, this would um, allow Amy to become more familiar with the town clerk position. Um, and Amy would also remain as the administrative assistant at 14 hours um, and not totally abandon me. So that's good and much appreciated. Um, so that's that's what we worked out after days of, of discussion and thinking. Um, so I think it I think this is the best way to move forward with the town. It allows people who are experienced in the different roles to remain um, involved in those roles and provide, you know, provide training. Um, quite honestly, if if um, if Lynn were to go somewhere, I don't know how we would train the next treasure collector. Mm -hmm. um, we would find a way to do it. I don't think it would be cheap, but we would find a way to do it. Um, and really, if if Amy Schrader wasn't around to help, you know, teach Amy Lavalley the town clerk role, um, that would be difficult as well. We don't have this. We do, we certainly don't have this huge pipeline of people that we can just pick from. Um, and neither do many municipalities. Uh, the treasurer collector filling the treasurer collector position is difficult. Uh, it, it was difficult. Um, a lot of municipalities are currently looking for treasure collectors. Not a lot, but a, a handful are currently looking. Um, and it's a difficult position to fill. Um, there's just there's just not that pipeline of, of people that have municipal experience, never mind municipal finance experience, um, that we could just sort of pluck out and bring them in and, and it's just going to be seamless. Um, so this seems like the best approach for the town. Um, I know, can I talk about, um, okay, the second, not specifics, but um, Amy has talked to me about wanting to um, discuss the pay rate for the position. Um, and I also feel like that it might be a good discussion for the, the board or the personnel committee or somebody to have, um, in terms of some type of training stipend for the you know the work that Lynn is going to do, um, so um, that's sort of what we're thinking here. Um, but it's not us that make the decisions to appoint people. Um, 
So I would be interested to hear, you know, the board's thoughts. Um, is it good? Is it bad? Um, sort of what what's the next steps that we want to do from here? Um, so currently, Lynn is retired. Um, so we currently do not have a treasure collector or an assistant treasure collector as we speak right now. Um, so no matter sort of how this ends, we should end with appointing somebody to, <laughs> to do it. Um, um, so um, I don't know how to use the, the billing system. So um, I probably screwed up. But anyways, I'll, I'll be quiet and listen. Okay. I had I'm one. A, uh, oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, you go ahead first, Julie. I'm a great believer in ongoing um, institutional and organizational knowledge. So I, I would wholeheartedly support these suggestions. Um, and I hope this is an appropriate thing to say, but upon Lynn's retirement for Lord only knows how many hours, I just want to say, Lynn, you have been um, a mainstay in this town ever since I moved here 20 years ago. And I just always knew that when I came into the offices, you were going to get done whatever needed to get done, um, kindly and politely and efficiently. And um, you are very appreciated. God, I'd like to second that. Thank you so much, Lynn, for everything you've done over the years for the town. Um, Getting back to the substance, I would first I I am fine with the arrangement that you have laid out, but I think the total number of hours worked be, between the two areas is reduced. Can the work get done? Mm -hmm. where, where are we? In, mostly, it looks like we're losing hours in your Brian, your area. Yeah. Um. So. I, what's not shown here is, I think, the um, Lynn says thank you. <laughs> um, what's not shown here is the is really the community development position, the assistant town administrator position. I think, um, I think if there if there were additional work that's going to get sort of unattended here, I think that's something that could be you know moved there. Um, I also think Amy Will Valley can get done what needs to get done. Um, and at least my experience in the office or when, when people have held multiple positions, it's the hour differential is sort of where you're getting paid from. Um, but it could be that maybe, maybe one week, one position requires a little bit more work than another, right? These mm -hmm. positions have ebb and flows in terms of the workload. So maybe there's a time where we're, we're in the value. We put in a little bit more with the administrative assistant, you know, because it's more work for for the for that part, than a little bit less for the town clerk. Um, so I, I think that would work out well. Um, Amy's happy. Amy Lavalle is happy to do you know as much overtime as we need her to. So, um, um, and just kidding. I, <laughs> I think I would like to see, to see several of these or the treasure collector positions and the, the administrative assistant position, I think should be while well, Amy's doing it at the same pace. So there's no incentive to do one job because I assume she will keep a log of her hours of what she's doing so that she said, oh, well, I need some more money, so I think I'll do town clerky stuff. Oh, no, 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 I was going to do that. No, but <laughs> it, whether it's you or if it's not you, the next person to come along, I think those two positions should should be paid the same. What, because, administrative assistant and town clerk? No, administrative assistant, uh, administrative assistant and assistant town clerk, <clears throat> which... Yeah. Currently, over a three hour difference, I think we should bump the administrative assistant pay up to equal the assistant town clerk. So there's actually no incentive to be working one rather than the other for financial reasons. I think it, probably the uh, personnel committee might might want to toss that around okay. a little bit. Because the, yeah, the administrative assistant position, for example, when the um, when the rec commission wanted basically 
someone to take care of administrative things, we suggested a position that got paid at the administrative assistant rate. Mm -hmm. So, so that's kind of a, a position we don't have a lot of in town, but that was at least one example where you don't need um, as much training to be an uh, administrative assistant as you do for an assistant town clerk. And I think the I, I'm not worried about the thing that you you brought up. The thing I'm, I guess I'm more um, worried about, not worried, worry is not the right word. I wanted to ask about, was up there, the, um, the, uh, it, it is odd to me that um, to train someone, Lynn will be taking a pay cut. And I assume that that's what the training stipend is about because we don't want to change the rate for the position. Um, because then you have to somehow change it back later. Um, and then you, but we want to take care of that differential that that sort of, if that, the, the pay rate for the assistant is $4 lower-ish, right? We want to be able to make that up and maybe even a little bit more because in practice for at least that, and this is for a year, right? This is for uh, going into the next fiscal year. How long a time period do we anticipate? Um, I think we'll be going into next fiscal year. I think, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that it would have to be for 12 months. I think it would depend on how long the training would be. Yeah. Well, um, when, we, when you did the annual cost, though, that was for a 12 month period? Yeah. Yeah. So we're so so if we're thinking of it as a, a twelve month sort of commitment, it may be a little bit more, might be a little bit less. Is that reasonable? That would be the that would be the eighteen hours at the twenty five twenty two. Yeah. Okay. Eighteen hours um, a week. Right. But I, so I think it's like so completely appropriate to add something to that, um, and uh, uh, that I, I just want to say just full wholeheartedly agree. And I hope it's not just the, I don't know, the roughly $4 per hour difference um, between the rate for the position. Um, I don't know how to fill those in. And I'm not, I, I, so it sounds like that might be the next step is do we, shall we appoint someone of us to help negotiate this so that at our next meeting, we can solve the finances or do we need to solve the finances tonight? I, th I think we need further discussions, but I'd like to propose is, given the difficulty of getting people in these financial positions, both treasurer, collector, and assistant, I would like to see those pay rates go up so that we're not just at the same level as other towns around us, but possibly higher. Because the cost of the town of finding someone, or the cost of the town of not finding someone, because we don't pay enough mm -hmm. is far more in mm -hmm. more than just dollars than we will have, have to pay. And, you know, we're not going to be able to compete with the big, you know, with Boston or Cambridge or even Belchertown or, or <laughs> even Belchertown. But I would like to be in a position where we stand less of a chance of losing someone because. Hmm. Okay. So I mean, this may be for the personnel committee. I don't know, but I would like to you know, see if we can get a pay rate there that lets us keep the people mm -hmm. in those positions. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember what the recommendations going forward. I think there were pay raises in some of these positions. But I, I'd have to go back and check the yeah, person. You know, I, I, I would hate to see someone here, you know, leave to go to Sunderland just for mm -hmm. a, another comparable town in the area because they were paying more because we were paying a, a rate that was only based on what other smaller towns were paying. If we can afford to do so, I think we should because the cost is much greater if we don't. Huh. Hmm. So I understand we need to make 
appointments tonight? Um, can we make the appointment and have the pay rate say, it looks like um, Amy Schrader wants to negotiate um, and then there's a blank under the training stipend for Lynn. Can we make those appointments not knowing those numbers and letting that the you know the, the two yellow boxes be negotiated uh, in the next let's say two weeks until our next meeting. Um, yes, you could make those appointments. Um, it would be up to the individuals to obviously accept to, to accept them, right? Um, What do we do about not knowing what the, the number is for Amy and not knowing what the number is for the training stipend? If this were if this were any other pay rate discussion, I think the board would usually def, you know usually send it to the personnel committee is what I think that they would typically do for a recommendation, right? And yeah. then um, the board either agrees or Disagrees with the personnel. Committee. As of now, the money, the pay should be set based on what was approved at last year's town meeting. These two numbers and in last year's budget. So there, there are numbers in place. We're looking to change them, but that would probably be for next fiscal year. Um, it could be. It could be whenever. Well, okay. It could be whenever, assuming that there's funds in the budget, or there can be funds. Okay. Well, fund, okay. Funds can be changed, but. but for the sake of this discussion, we can say that at least temporarily the existing numbers will be the pay. Yeah, that's yeah, so what I was trying to get at. Like, we keep the current numbers, but we know we have to update um, with whatever negotiation goes on. I have not heard in any of them the emails going by, uh, uh, at least if, maybe I missed it, a, any suggestion for what the training stipend should be. And that might be something where we'd really maybe either toss it to the personnel committee, which is like, whoop, caught that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or uh, um, or designate one of us to help with that negotiation. Is that, or is that not? Well, we could try to arrive at a number based on yeah. What it would cost to hire someone to do it? You know, what, right. what would the number of hours be? What would the rate be for a person? Right. And, it be, and then peg it off of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it may be that that's a conversation we have with the personnel committee, but I don't know that they they don't have another meeting set that I'm aware of. There was a, a doodle going out about the personnel committee meeting to talk with consultants yeah. about the updating um updating of the personnel policies um and i don't know if that is um oh, okay thanks lynn there's a um there are there are some sources of money for paying for your budget includes six weeks of double pay for training for six weeks that hasn't been used this should be able to absorb any increases okay so for this fiscal year, we're covered for those extra costs, it sounds like. And um, yeah, and we've got to get that sorted out for the next fiscal year because that budget will be coming up for a vote in May. Okay. Um, the personnel committee, we, we penciled in March 22nd, but that's 20 some, 20 yeah. days, 23 days away. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'd rather not wait that long. I mean, what, so, Brian, what are the options then? What do you think is a good option? Um, I mean, we could we could schedule. I, I don't think it would be an issue scheduling the, the personnel committee sooner. Um, um, accounting wise, if the personnel committee meets on March twenty second, can they recommend to us and we approve? retroactive pay for this period between now and when they meet. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they, they can meet on March 22nd, then we just apply it retroactively as well. It's just, it, it just prolongs the uncertainty for 
Right. And, and yeah, and I think the personnel committee will have a full agenda on the 22nd already. So, oh, so do you think you can? I think we could, we should right. probably try to pull together a, a personnel committee meeting before the 22nd. Just that one item. It doesn't have to be a long meeting. It can be. Right. Um, before the 14th. Okay. All right. So I think we need a motion. I move that we uh, appoint Amy Schrader, treasurer collector, Lynn Sibley, assistant, Amy Schrader, town clerk. Amy, no, Lavelle. Amy Schrader was elected as town clerk. We don't. Oh, she's. Yeah. Oh, we know. We're not appointing. Sorry. Point point. <laughs> sorry. 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 Okay. I'm going to back up. Amy Schrader. Appointed uh, treasurer collector Lynn Sibley assistant and training, mm, avoiding the town clerk altogether, and administrative assistant Amy LaValle. No. no, no, Amy as assistant town clerk, we get to a point that's not uh, elected. You go ahead. And do the motion. <laughs> All right. All right, Fred, you do better. Uh, I move we appoint Amy Schrader as treasurer collector, Lynn Sibley as assistant treasurer collector, and Amy Lavalley as the assistant town clerk at pay rates that have been set and subject to retroactive revision by the personnel committee. And so I'll second Amy. that. Amy yeah. Lavalley is already in that position. So. Got it. So much. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good motion, Fred. I second that. All so right. okay. uh, let's take a vote then. Uh, Fred. Yes. Julie. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Okay. So all the appointments are made. Um, I'm already on the personnel committee. <laughs> so um, so I'll uh, be able to update us when we get at our, at our next meeting, I hope. Uh, we'll the personnel committee will have a chance, had a chance to meet before then. Okay. Well, just thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay. Right. Taking my screen back here. Um, so, community development director will be on a future old business item, perhaps. Or maybe it'll be new business. Yes, I don't know. You. It'll be number seven, either way. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, shall we go back to um, the old business? Thirty-five. And and uh, seven. Hmm? yes, seven B one. Yeah. So the first seven B is what yes. we're on now, right? Yes. Okay. Um, we'd like to discuss the formation of a stakeholders group for the Exit 35 Area Planning Study. So identify some stakeholders and see if we can get them to participate. <laughs> so I think I used the wrong name here. Um, so, at, well, I, I typed what I meant to type, but... I think I think what I'm what we're looking for in talking with the the consultant is actually like a smaller study group, uh -huh. um, the smaller people, and then engaging a larger stakeholder group of property owners and business owners within that area. Um, at one or you know one or two actual like stakeholder meetings, larger meetings, um, to receive feedback. So um, I don't think it needs to be a a you know, a formal committee of the, the select board, but we would just, I think I would just be looking for any interest that people have or um, know of anybody that might be interested in in, in participating in that, um, whether it's a select board member, um, you know, my, my thought was obviously planning board, we should obviously have a planning board member. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do it on the select board. I'd be yep. interested if we can oh. bear two select board members on that committee. And you have a little more experience with the select board than I do, so I would. I'm, I'd be happy to have both of us as long I'm as two, two select board members get to open meeting while properties. Oh, we would have to post. We would have to post the yeah post the meeting. Is that problematic? Um. Not necessarily. It would. It would just. 
um, everything would just everything would be posted in public and yeah, probably have to be on Zoom and have an agenda. Yeah, I see. Okay. Um, if you if you want to sort of, I think it's more trouble than it's worth that folks. I just um, would be better left less formal. All right. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I'll do it. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Uh, and, and if anybody knows any other yeah. people in the community that might want to be on that as well. Um, but that's just looking for, you know, with a small core study group to just provide feedback and sort of do a little bit of the legwork that needs to be done. Um, I'm sorry, so who's going to me? Okay. So if, any, if you have any ideas, you could send them. Send it my way. Oh, people. Okay. We have a uh, we have a new volunteer on the on the treasurer collector study committee who expressed interest in becoming involved with town government. So, um, cool. We'll certainly involve that person as yeah. well. Um, I want to back up for a second. Um, had you? Been putting work into this or thought into this already. I don't want to snatch out oh, something that you uh fleeting thought. That's okay. what that is. <laughs> um, then I'll maintain it. Okay. So is that enough for you think to get the small group going and then okay. Yep. All right. Very good. And will Berkshire Design be coordinating it? Or will you be coordinating it, Brian? Um, it'll be a collaborative effort okay. between this both, but they're going to do the majority of the, okay. of the work. Yeah. So my job is to say yes and show up, not yep. to coordinate it. Right. Okay. Yep. And Thank you. Contribute, just learn about it and contribute ideas. Yep. Okay. Very good. Um, and uh, Old Business C to discuss the Haydenville Road reconstruction project as it relates to land use provided in the mitigation under Article 97 of Massachusetts State Constitution. So it sounds like there's been some progress on maybe finding some a land swap that we might be able to do. Yeah. Um... So really quick, this is the Haydenville Road Reconstruction Project that's being designed by uh, Mass DOT providing the funds for design, which is actually very unusual. And then it's being, you know, cons construction funding is coming through federal highway funds through the Transportation Improvement Plan that's um, run by the Franklin County Transportation Planning Organization. Each county gets so many millions of dollars each year that is programmed in for, for infrastructure and road improvements. Um, we are currently um, in the plan for um, construction funding in federal fiscal year 2025. I don't know if we're going to stay there. Um, we may get pushed back a year to federal fiscal year 26. That's currently what's in their draft plan right now that I was surprised to see at a meeting today um, and not very happy about it. That's OK. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe can vouch for that. Well, this um, happened. This happened before, didn't it? Yeah. Like we'd get put on like the next year without anybody ever saying yeah, anything about it. Earlier on, um, for reasons that I don't necessarily agree with, but I have a phone call with them. Um, well, Keith and I have a phone call with them on Thursday morning um, to talk about it because mm -hmm. I think part of it is I, there's a disconnect right now between Mass DOT is providing all the funding and paying for the engineer. So we're like over here, like, hey, like, like keep us involved. And um, meanwhile, we're addressing this Article 97 issue, which they think is going to be, you know, slow down in the process. But anyways, um, we'll hopefully remedy that and have a uh, serious discussion about the timing of that. Um, if it has to get pushed back one year, um, it is what it is. It's important that we do it right. Um, but regardless, so Article 97, um, 
is a, a part of the state constitution that protects land, um, conservation land, watershed land. Um, it, it's, a, it's a restriction on land that exists. In order to get uh, land removed from Article 97, it takes two thirds vote of both houses of the, of, of the, of the state legislature. Um, it requires approval from the executive office of uh, executive office of environmental affairs, and the governor needs to sign off as well. Um, the governor won't sign off unless, well, in, in past, if, is if the administration, the EO EEA, doesn't sign off, the governor's not going to sign it. And they have a um, disposition policy for Article ninety seven land that requires. Um, land of equal or greater value in terms of um, ecological value, um, land size, and land cost that we provide equal or greater land and mitigation. So Haydenville Road, on, on both sides of Haydenville Road, for the beginning part closer to Williamsburg, that land is owned by the city of Northampton for watershed purposes. So that land is automatically enrolled in Article 97 protections because it's watershed land. So we need to take some of that land out of our 97 land um, for some road widening, some, you know, some slope um, so that we can have the proper slope for the road. Um, there's some, you know, some drainage and things like that that we need. Um, we're essentially, it's not like we're taking a lot of land, it's like we're taking really small slivers along the edge of the road, right? Um, and we think at a maximum, it's gonna be a total of around half an acre of land that we need. Um, either, either for uh, permanent easements or temporary easements. So long story short, um, we need to provide land um, to compensate for that, for that land being taken out. Um, it's a little bit, the situation is a little bit different because the city of Northampton is the property owner in this case within the town of Wheatley. So the city of Northampton is the one that needs to um, to file the special legislation, the request, take it out of Article 97 land. But Whaley's obligation is to um, is to provide that land. We will likely provide that land to Northampton. We'll put it in Article 97 land. Everybody will be happy. We can go along with our with our road construction project. Um, the question is that we're trying to answer tonight is well, what land? are we going to provide there's no town owned land um that's of interest to northampton and there's no town owned land that's um we had conversations with 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 eoea and the land that we're taking out is what's called zone one watershed land um it's in close it's in really close proximity to the reservoir um so they're looking at ideally land that's still within that that uh Zone A, Zone One, um, within Zone One, with watershed there. So um, we've identified a parcel. Actually, Fred, the one who first came to me about it, talked to me about it. Um, that um, I included maps in the packet uh, for the board to look at. Um, it's a 34-acre parcel that is on. Um, I think I have it up. Well, it'll be in the main material. Um, it's actually off Haydenville Road because it's across the brook. Um, go with. So it's the parcel highlighted in yellow here. Um, this is Haydenville Road. Um, you know, the construction project that we're going to be working on is from the, the line um, this way. Um, around the reservoir, this is Fountain Street Reservoir that's in, um, I think it's technically in Williamsburg. Yeah, most of it's in Williamsburg. Um, so, so this is some of it's in Hatfield. Yeah, some of it's in Hatfield. So this is a 34 acre parcel. Um, it's wooded. Um, it does not have access to Hidenville Road. Um, I think it has access through what an old discontinued road that comes through here. Um, so the thinking that at least the thinking that Keith and I um, have so far is that we would, and this is a, a request to the select board to, to, to hear your thoughts, because it would be the select board that would be taking action, would be to 
um, ask to purchase um, one acre of this parcel. So this is a 33, 34 acre parcel. We would seek to purchase sort of an acre of the parcel here um, along this area. This parcel, this one, it's a sideways U-shaped parcel here. This is one, the same parcel here. This is all city of Northampton owned already. Um, so we'd be looking to sort of have a, a piece of this parcel sort of um, separated off and then sold to the town. Um, it's in zone one, so it, it, it should have the same ecological value in the eyes of EOEA. Obviously, we would present this to EOEA and say, this is our plan, what do you say? If they say no, then we wouldn't do it, obviously. But um, there's not a lot of other parcels around here that the city of Northampton doesn't own or that, that, that don't have residences on them um, or that don't have homes on them. Um, so that's um, that's our current thinking right now. Um, so I guess I'm looking for, for the select board's thoughts on that. Um, my thought would be to draft a letter to the property owner, um, asking, letting them know that the town's interested in purchasing an acre of this parcel. Um, I don't know that we want to talk about any other means of acquisition at this point, but those exist. Um, but it would seem like the, the initial approach would be, you know, to make an offer, let them know that we're interested in, in purchasing that parcel to see what they're, see if they're willing to or not. Um, mm -hmm. And we would pay appraised value. So we'd have to have an appraisal done on that, you know, on that portion of the property that the town would acquire with the idea being that once we acquire it, that it would be, um, you know, really, I don't think we would sell to the city of Northampton. It would it would likely be you're giving us this land, Article I seven land, all these easements. We have to provide land to mitigation. So let's call it, you know, let's call it even. Um, so that's sort of our thinking. So so the first step would be a letter, um, if that's the way that the board wanted to go. It sure cool. seems like a sounds good. The next best step. And do we have any idea what an acre of that land might be worth? I know we don't have an assessment on hand, but does anybody in the room happen to know? Uh, um, I don't know. I would assume it's, I mean, I, I think it's undevelopable. Right. And I think it's, you know, vacant property. So um, I think it would be in the thousands. Maybe a couple thousand, if I had to guess, maybe. Last time I inquired, or inquired about purchasing undevelopable land, it was about 3,000. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds like that's worth pursuing, and we can probably afford it if it comes to paying for it. In the context of a $10 million project. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I move we contact the. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does it need a motion and a vote? Owner of the land. What is this? Lot 11. I don't know what the lot lot is. Christian. I'll take 11. Oh, yeah. We'll go. And yeah, the full. Mm -hmm. I know which parcel you're talking about. Parcel 11 is shown on the map. Par parcel 11 is shown on the Haydenville Road proposed Article 97 map that we have in our packet and that we approached the owner to see if we can purchase one acre of that one. I second that. All right. Great. Let's uh, bring that to a vote then. Uh, Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay. Very good. Now on to number seven, new business. Um, again. Seven two eight. Seven two eight again. <laughs> again. Okay, to discuss the staffing levels of the police department uh, in relation to the upcoming fiscal year twenty four budget request. So I think here 
we might want to hear from Jim. You still there, Jim? I am. Thank you, Thank you for your patience. Oh, no problem. I just want to apologize ahead of time. I do not have as tangled of a weave, a web to weave as Brian had <laughs> earlier. <laughs> much less complicated. Well, more complicated, but the presentation is much less, much less complicated. So um, I guess I'll start off with just a little bit of, I'll, I'll try to be as brief as I can. Um, I'll start off with just a little bit of history as to where we're at and why we're in the position that we're in. Um, this goes back to 2020, December of 2020, when the Police Reform Act was signed into legislation. There, since then, <clears throat> there's a number of um, parts of the legislation that have gone into place. There's still things that are going to be going into place. It's a 163-page document that there's there's just a lot to it. Um, part of that was training, and we've discussed this for the last couple of years, the training for our current part-time officers. So the training for our current part-time officers was what was required by legislation was an additional 200 hours per officer. Those 200 hours include 80 hours of online training and 120 hours of in-person training. We have kind of anticipated that there's going to be some changes as we move forward through this, and we're already starting to face some of those changes in the way of we currently have two, two of our officers that have decided that they're not going to continue. They're not going to continue uh, their employment <clears throat> and put in that extra 200 hours, whether they don't have the vacation time, age. There's a lot of factors that they've decided that they don't want to participate um, any further. So we've lost two people, or we're going to be losing two people. We've had one retire, and one's probably going to be done um, at the end of June. So that's that's starting to show that we're getting into a position where we're we're starting to lose people, which is which was the concern to begin with. So that leaves us at the point where we need to, we as a town. Um, need to start thinking about making an investment in public safety, uh, namely the police. So what my plan is, what I would like to do is I'd like to hire a full-time position. That's that's where we're at. I'd like to hire a full-time position. Uh, we do have some quality candidates, um, some officers that are interested in this position within our department. Um, this would alleviate a lot of training issues because if we hired somebody new outside of the department, we're looking at a 350 hour field training program that we have. So with the field training program, equipment, other things, physical exams, um, psychological exams, all the other things that are required now, we're looking at about $10,000 to just to get somebody in the door uh, for a new hire. So if we if we were able to use current part time officer to fill that position, um, we could potentially save some money there. Um, so this position, in the big scheme of things, is going to increase our patrol coverage. Um, it's going to reduce reduce the reliance on part time officers. That was a, a big item. We've been talking about this for a couple of years now, but this was a big item from the finance committee's perspective, as well as the a select board's perspective was looking at a, uh, adding a new position or adding a full-time position without the reduction of some part-time shifts or the part-time budget. It just didn't look like it was was going to happen. So I was asked to look at a an option that reduced the uh, part-time budget. So what I've come up with is a budget that reduces the part-time officers and we're looking at about cutting, we're looking at cutting about 11 shifts per month. That's it's almost half of the shifts. We have right now we have about 23 shifts a month that we currently cover with part-time officers. Um, so we're looking at with the, the schedule that I'm looking at, we're cutting of about uh, about 11 <clears throat> of those part-time shifts. Um, so that's 132 shifts for the year. And that gets us down about $22,000, $22,300. 
um, just just cutting that those part time shifts. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think in the units of shifts per month, Jim. Sorry, to sorry. Interrupt. I just I'm trying to think. You, you it's like eleven shifts per month. Um, like if you're a full time officer, how many shifts per month are you are you working? So you would be working a five day work week. So twenty right. shifts. So twenty shifts. Okay. Yep. All right. Twenty shifts. Sorry. Yeah, I, I was. I, I I could have figured that out. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so this, I mean, this position, it, it's got a lot of benefits to it that we could go through. I, I submitted the letter, which kind of. My in my budget summary, which kind of outlined more in detail, um, but the the basic things about being able to increase more uh, community outreach, we'd have an additional person for community outreach. We'd have increased traffic enforcement, um, including some shifts during the week. Some shifts on the weekend would be taken from the part timers, part time officers, and given to the the full time position. Um, it's obviously going to Im improve the safety of the community with the simple fact that we're going to have with this position, we would we would alleviate any gaps that we currently have. So the gaps that we currently have um, during the during the week is because of the, the administrative responsibilities I have with going to meetings and just doing the general administrative stuff within the department. So the schedule would include an overlap of of three shifts during the week. So I would have somebody that would be out patrolling while I'm doing administrative stuff or attending meetings or, or doing other uh, police duties that I might have, training, so on and so forth. So there'd be a little bit of overlap there. Um, not the full overlap, it's not gonna be every day, but it'll, it'll at least give us three days of, of overlap um, per week. Uh, I think the, the big thing from my perspective, looking at a full-time position as opposed to continuing down the, the part-time officer role as we start losing people that are going to be going to other departments, because once we complete this training, they'll be technically certified so they can really go anywhere. They could laterally transfer anywhere to a full-time position. So we have the potential of losing more, more officers, part-time officer positions. So I really want to find a position that that an officer that can dedicate their their time to the department. Um, right now we have part time officers, some of them work once in a while, some of them work once a week, some of them work twice a week, um, depending on what they have to fill in for for shifts and schedules. So it doesn't really give us a lot of um, commitment in the way of what a full time position would offer us. I could use a full time position. I could make them a court officer. I could. We could do lots of other things with a full time position that I can't count on for a part time position right now. Um, so just looking at some of the some of the numbers, I'm looking at a starting starting salary forty eight thousand eight hundred dollars. Uh, that's twenty three dollars and fifty cents per hour. That would be just a starting position at this point. I, I don't have great, great numbers. If you look at our salary survey, there's really not full-time positions on there. There's sergeant's positions where some of those sergeant's positions are full-time officers. Um, some of them aren't full-time officers. So it's really difficult to, to gauge. So I'm looking at attempting to stay competitive because one of the biggest things we're facing in law enforcement is recruitment. Um, I go to meetings all the time. I just went to a meeting last week where the main topic of discussion, and this was just in Franklin County, um, the main topic of discussion was recruitment to the point where some departments are looking at offering um, bonuses, sign-on bonuses. There's departments that are giving thousands of dollars to come sign on to their, their department. Um, the, the salaries are going up because everybody's trying to stay competitive. Um, we, we can't hire somebody at 40, $45,000 and expect that we're going to get one, a quality person or two, somebody that's going to stick around very long. Um, because if they get on our department, they can easily transfer to another department, maybe a neighboring department. 
and make more money. So that's that's essentially what people are people are looking at. So I want to be able to have a, a fair wage that we can still get some level of dedication out of out of an officer, a full time position. I don't want to just get somebody that's going to up and leave in a year um, and go for somewhere somewhere better, somewhere different. And again, pulling from our part time pool of officers, we already have dedicated officers that would be more than willing to become more dedicated on a full time basis because they're limited with their time because of full time jobs that they currently have now. Um, so we do have good quality candidates. We can save again, saving on the training. Um, I'm looking at the budget itself increasing, putting a little bit of money in there for overtime. That'll reduce the number of shifts that we have off because right now we're only working with comp time. We don't have overtime. So any any additional hours above and beyond goes into comp time, which translates into time off. Um, so we're looking at having officers on more than we, we have them now. Because sometimes with the comp time, we don't have money to, to fill that shift. It may go unfilled. So, so we really want to be able to make sure we're covering the two shifts a day, seven days a week that we've that we've been covering uh, right along. We talked about being down the two positions, um, being down those two positions. If I don't have to go look at refilling those two positions, we're looking at a a little bit of savings and training for those officers because we're not required to do the the forty hours of um, in service training with them. So we're looking at a almost $1,700 savings without having to hire those two, those two positions back. Um, there's, there's the possibility of some increases. If we do find somebody that has, um, continued education, associate's degree, bachelor's degree on um, the town currently offers the, the Quinn bill, but we only offer it at 50% of what the state <laughs> provided years back. So it could any could any, could be anywhere between, depending on what what degree they might have, um, it could be upwards of 10% of their of their salary that would go towards the Quinn bill. Um, we're also looking at, depending on who who we hire, the possibility of having to pay insurance, but that wouldn't be a budgeted item from from the police budget. So that's why it wasn't included in there. Um, but it would have to come from from somewhere. Um, last time we presented this, I know the numbers. I sat down with Lynn. The numbers were upwards of seventeen thousand for the highest, um, the highest plan, a family plan with the. Um, I don't want to call it the best insurance because we we have good insurance with town, but the highest rate that we had would would have put it around seventeen thousand um, dollars for the year. And if we do hire somebody that has a spouse that covers the insurance or that they're not, they don't need the insurance, obviously we would, we wouldn't need that, that coverage for that person. So um, just a couple of final figures, just looking at comparing what we have nationally. Um, so the national average is about 9.2%. When you look at how much it costs for how much towns pay for their police department. Uh, the national average is about 9.2%. And Waitley right now, I think we're sitting right around 4%, 4.1% of the overall budget that goes towards the police department. So it's only 4% of the, the overall budget that goes towards the police department. The national average, according to the FBI statistics, <clears throat> uh, national average should be about 2.43 officers per 1,000. <laughs> Residents of the town. So we're looking at what, what the national average would be, would be 3.88 officers per uh, for our for our town, for the 1,600 people for our town. So that obviously puts us less because we only have two full-time positions and we have um, some part-time positions, but they don't they don't equal to a full-time position. So uh, so we're looking at about what we would need. That three three full time positions plus the additional would give us the the part time positions that we would currently that we would continue to keep to fill the other the other shifts that wouldn't go filled. Um, again, we're down to six part time officers. 
I think I think that covers my my quick outline. Unless you guys have questions, I can I can look through this while while you guys ask any questions that you might have. Yeah. Thank you for this. It gives us something to consider. I think that we're going to have to hear it again when you talk to the finance committee. Yep. Because that's that's the the biggest issue. I mean, it didn't cost any more money. Sure, of course, but the question's mm -hmm. going to be budgetary. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But like I said, it's time to, I think it's, it's time to make the investment. If we don't make the investment, we're going to be, we're going to be left behind. We're going to be in, in a position where we're going to be struggling to find quality people. That's just going to affect the, the quality of service that we provide to the town. Um, I don't want to say it's going to make the town less safe, but I'm always looking at making the town more safe. That's my ultimate goal is to make the town more safe. Um, when you look at the, the years, that, that I've been here, 23 years that I've been on this department, um, the, the town has made some investments, but there's also been a lot of uh, grants that we've gotten over the years, the equipment that we have, we've got $100,000 worth of worth of equipment that the town hasn't had to pay for. Um, we've, we've gotten police officers hired on grants that the town hadn't had to pay for. Um, we're getting grants that are coming in for to help with our training. From our local legislators that have looked at the police reform and said, "Hey, we're, you know, initially we didn't really look at the cost of this, and now we're looking at the cost, so we're going to give you some money back. So we're actually going to save some money in that sense. We'll get some money back from our training. Um, so there's there's a lot of investments that have been made from grants. There's a lot of investments that have made from um, the legislators and things like that. Um, I I think it's it's really a time that the town has to start looking at um, an investment." And we're looking at a $48,000, call dollars $49,000 position um, for a 30, I don't know my glasses, 32, 32000 dollars increase, which you could drop that number down a little bit because we've added some things like the Quinn bill, we've added that to the to the budget. And there was some things that weren't included as far as my salary goes. So that's that's a, a little bit more than two thousand dollars. So, so we're actually, when you really look at it, we're actually down to about a twenty-three thousand dollar investment. For that twenty-three thousand dollar investment, we're getting a, a full-time position. So, I think it's it's time. I think it's a good opportunity, time-wise. And I I like to do this before we we start losing more people, more quality people, and it's going to have to cost the town much much more money to. To bring in uh, the quality people and train them, if we wait too. Yeah, I, I don't know if you were here with the treasurer collector discussion, but it's the same thing. I was paying people enough to retain the people we have and to hire people when we need to, rather than having to go someplace else for a lot more money. It, it's exactly the same discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. And trying to find somebody that's willing to. Put their life on the line, put their safety on the line to protect the community. That that to me, that's even more of an investment. You know, you get get somebody that's willing to put their safety on the line, and we're we're going to provide them with the training and the equipment they need to to do that job. Um, but it's definitely a and it's something that they have to consider. Who's gonna Who's gonna want to do the job if you if you're not going to pay them? Who's going to want to put their their life or safety on the line if you're not going to want to pay them? Yeah. I guess the only thing I would um, add is I'm looking at uh, there's the budget sheet and then there's sort of the two page budget summary. Yep. So I assume that that's something that is already sent to the finance committee went in with your budget probably right. It went to Brian. I'm not sure if it's yeah gone to. It will go to the finance committee. Okay. Yeah. Um, I sort of feel like. Um, you kind of buried a little bit the um like i i feel like well, i'm i'm not trying to say anything bad about our finance committee but it would be 
probably really helpful if there was a chart and if it said, here's how much we have to pay for this officer. Here's how much we're going to save on the various budget lines. Here's the net cost, the 23,000 number that you brought up. Here's a list of bullet points of all the benefits we're going to get for that $23,000 investment. I think they need to see it that starkly. And the information is, is um, it, it's in the narrative, I think, for yeah. the most part. Um, but I would say, make it easy for the people who have to make the decision to really see, here's what you're investing. Here's what we're getting for it. And really spell that out, that here's yeah. the full-time officer would otherwise cost this, but I'm taking half of my part-time shifts and converting them to make this something that's cost worth. I mean, and and the, the but you also training was the other place where we would potentially be saving money on that. So I would say it, it could just be like a a little comparison chart. One side is sort of here's the cost, but hey, here's the benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and and do it as a summary. Um and I think that would be that would um probably go a long way toward having people understand what you're asking for better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So I, that's, that's my, my main comment on it. Less of a tangled web. <laughs> yes. That's why I did a chart. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I can certainly do that. That's I've got the yeah. points already. I've got the numbers. It's, it's already yeah. there. It's just not yeah. I think putting putting something you know even if it's repetitive with what's already in the letter, uh, that's perfectly fine. It's a summary. It doesn't have to be lengthy, um, but uh, uh, I think they will respond better to something like that because they're busy. They're looking at like fifteen thousand budgets, um, and the clarity of something like that would probably be really appreciated. I agree. Yeah, I I don't I don't want to. I guess I tread lightly. I don't want to insult anybody in the the finance committee or anything. Oh, yeah, oh, me neither. They're busy people. Yeah, making it as clear as possible is. But I is, but I also want to look at it from the perspective of. I I don't want this to just be, okay. The finance committee has to decide if we're going to get a full time position. I'm, I'm looking for the support from the select board. I'm looking for the support from the community. If the community doesn't know what we need, you know, if the if the finance committee turns around and says, nope, we're not going to do this and it doesn't go on there, the town's not going to know what we need unless we're able to present it to them. So I want to present this to the select board. I want to present this to the town so everybody knows exactly the position that we're in yep. and not just have it be the finance committee making the, the final decision to say, yes or no so <clears throat> that's what i would like to see anyways brian what's what would the timing be as far as us approving a position versus um budgeting for that position <laughs> which comes first oh uh, so <clears throat> If the let's say the select board said they wanted to add them, yeah, uh, in, in agreement with the full time officer position, I mean, it, it's within the finance committee's discretion to recommend a budget to town mm -hmm. meeting. Um, so if if town meeting doesn't fund a position, then oh, if town meeting doesn't fund an amount for a position, mm -hmm. um. Doesn't approve a budget which funds that position. Right. Um, then the town meeting adopts line items. I don't really want to get out of the details, but yeah. the, the, the town item, uh, town item, <laughs> town, town meeting would 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 set a certain amount of the for, for the budget. Um, they adopt amounts. We don't adopt by salary or general expenses. So. Um, in my opinion, it would be within the discretion of the police chief, and we have a strong chief in Whitby, so 
it would be up to the police chief how they would want to spend it with the understanding that the select board, you know, similar to my position, the select board hires me. Um, so I try to do what they want to do. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, finance committee should be voting on amounts and recommending amounts. Um, and then town meeting would, 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 would approve that. Um, okay. Select board and finance committee don't have to agree. Um, as a select board, as the, as the overseer of the warrant can, can put on articles that are different. Um, but the finance committee has a right to recommend a budget um, to town meeting. So, so that's a really convoluted answer to your question. <laughs> right. Ideally, it would be the select board would like to do this. And then you know, the funding for that and then recommendations of the of the finance. But the finance committee doesn't control what so if the budget calls for a full-time officer at pay of 48.88, we technically don't have to approve a new position that would be yeah. in, in the chief's budget for him to spend on salaries. Um, it, it's a little bit complicated when we're dealing with when we're dealing with with, with chiefs, both the police chief and, and the fire chief, in terms of the discretion they have to run their departments. Um, I mean, the money would be the limiting factor. Um, okay. Yeah. So, if I understand it correctly, and um, and since I'm the police liaison, I, I hope I do. What Jim is looking for tonight is um, a sign of whether we support um, his proposal to the finance committee. And we are attending those meetings regularly. So we would be at the meeting when Jim makes the proposal. And that might be a time for us to express our support or lack of support. I don't want to assume um, for this uh, proposal to increase the budget by roughly the cost of half a person, half a full-time person, to get a full-time person and to make up the other half by cutting uh, savings from other parts of the budget. So, and since I've, this is not my first time seeing this. <laughs> so so I, I, I kind of know where I stand, but I wonder about uh, Julie and Fred, what do you think about the general idea? I like the general idea, uh, especially if we can get a full-time officer at a, a reduced rate, essentially, by finding the savings elsewhere, um, especially given the difficulty in finding officers in general and the shortage of what the new training rules have done to thin the ranks of part-time officers. Um, yeah, we shouldn't be relying so much on part-time officers because they're not going to be a lot of them are out there around with the training anymore. Yep. Um, I think I haven't formed an opinion yet. Um, it's kind of all newer information for me, so I'm just percolating it and thinking about it and taking it in. Um, I'm not necessarily leaning one way or the other. I think you put together a really good argument and I'm just trying to understand it and come to a conclusion. Okay. Amy, do you recall when, which finance committee meeting the, the police are gonna, yeah. Hot quiz. <laughs> April. Maybe yeah. Jim would know. It's April. It's the April meeting. Yeah. So I have time to put them in. Okay. You have questions for the April meeting? April yeah. 4th. It must be April 4th. Yeah, because there was one in March and then there's one in April and the police are in April. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, then would it be appropriate to, um, 
discuss this again at a future meeting. Um, give Julie a little time to think about it. And, sure. Um, I'd, okay. I'd be happy to sit down and discuss things further. As I know, we, we've had numerous discussions about police reform, um, but I haven't mm -hmm. had, I don't believe I've had those discussions with, uh, with Julie about the specifics of the police reform and the, you know, the, the things that are required for changes. And maybe she'd have a better understanding if she knew exactly what we were faced with. Yeah. Would, would it be appropriate for you and I to actually have a meeting and sure. you can update yeah. me on what you're doing? And yeah, yeah, right, absolutely. Like and I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Excellent. Very Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank Jim. <clears throat> All right. So uh, there's one more item under new business, which I don't know, we might have covered a little bit to discuss the training needs of newly hired employees yeah. and possible solutions, mm -hmm. consultants, training staff. And we're tangled web. web. The tangled web. So, how is that actually going to end? It's going to the personnel committee, I guess, is the next step. Okay. All right. So, I guess we have taken care of, of that. Are, are we, we on to eight? We are, are we on to eight? Select board liaison updates, which Eight. is for timely updates of select board members serving on other boards or committees. Um, thinking in the past week, I don't think I've had, in the past two weeks, I don't think I've had um, another meeting uh, with other groups that I'm working with. The, we've been trying to find a date on the uh, Board of Oversight for the Senior Center to go and take a look at the Congo Church. It's like, the th this is like at least the third doodle that's gone out. <laughs> trying to find a time. At least. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we're we're trying we're trying to do something. Uh, but right now things are, are relatively working smoothly with the two people we have working there. Um, they're, they're keeping up with everything. So that's... Uh, that's all I have to report. Can I ask her a question about my love? Oh, sure. Sure. Just give your name and address. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Amy Lavalley. I live at 171 State Road. Um, has the Board of Oversight looked at the newly vacated Yankee Candle office building as a possible site? Not yet. That's uh, been since our last meeting that that building came out. I, I don't know how big it is. I don't know if it'd just be like way too big for a senior center or what, but um, I'll bring that up at the next board of oversight meeting then to see if, uh, you know, carving out some section of that might be, might be good. That's all. Thanks. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Fred or Julie, do you have any? Uh, my, my own the only things I've had with screening committees for the fire chief and treasurer collector, and those have been dealt with. Um, Climate resilience committee, they did a really nice, <clears throat> excuse me, the students did a really nice presentation for the folks at Conway School of Design. Um, there were alumni present and asking questions um, who had positions working in the field um, and they they did a fantastic job and I think we're just waiting to find another time for a community engagement meeting. Okay. All right. Looks like we're on to town administrator updates. I'll make them quick. Um Hurley Park restroom renovations we believe will start tomorrow. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. 8 a.m. Um, 8 a.m. Um, so that we will get that underway um, in terms of the um, driveway and site work for um, the outside portion of that, the accessibility portion of that. Um, we're obviously waiting for the weather. Um, and Keith, um, I believe, has some final designs to deal with some drainage issues uh, with the parking lot there. So um, all that 
Uh, both of those aspects of the project are on track. Um, that needs to be wrapped up um, really by the middle of May and for us to be able to meet our uh, grant funding deadlines and reporting. Um, so that will be good to get that underway. Um, complete streets project update. This is funding from MassDOT to complete the sidewalks um, from the town hall to across from the congregational church. That's sort of the last piece that is remaining to complete that sidewalk loop in the center of town. There's also funding for extending the sidewalk at the elementary school and some intersection improvements in West Waitley. Really some minor safety improvements um, in terms of trying to realign some of those intersections. Um, that should be going out to bid. Um, FROCOG is going to be helping us with um, getting the, docu the bid documents out. They did that also um, with the last one as well, um, what we did the sidewalks. Um, CRMA, um, I don't know why it is in this order, but it's Culver Replacement Municipal Assistance. Um, that's the uh, grant we previously had to start the design work on the replacement of the uh, culvert on Christian Lane adjacent uh, between Castaways and the fire station. Um, I had a call with um, one of the um, staff people there and we talked about the um, application. Um, so that the, the notice of funding availability should be coming out. I thought it was this week and we'll have I think we have 30 or 45 days to submit an application. So um, Keith and I have talked about this. We'd like to um, submit the application to finish the design. You recall it has to relate to the soil borings and the fact that we couldn't find bedrock and all that kind of stuff. So we want to get that. It's more involved than would have been anticipated by the initial grant. Yeah. Um, we want to get that project to 100% design because we feel that S some point there should be infra additional infrastructure funding that should funnel down for the states. Um, so we would be in an advantageous position to have a project that's 100% designed um, to, to pursue construction funding. There's also so additional grant sources that are a possibility like the MVP, the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant um, also provides funding for action grants. Um, Although that would fund probably a portion of, of this culvert, which would I mean cost estimates for upwards of a, of a million dollars to replace this. We're essentially replacing it with the wool of the bridge, is, is what it would be. Um, but it's not cheap, but it, it needs to be done um, sooner rather than later. So, and then the, I just wanted to keep this on here municipal electricity aggregation. Um, we need to. Um, Talk more about that with the Energy Committee at a future meeting. Um, we're waiting on dates from Colonial Power um, in terms of when the RFP will go out and just to sort of get timing around this whole process. Um, so, the, uh, so, and have a sort of a, a general discussion to fill people in on what the process is and what the, what the goals are. Um, but I, I will look to invite the Energy Committee to a future meeting if the board was okay with that. To, Give that, uh, that explanation. Uh, Joyce, you may know somebody who could do that. So I might, yeah. Um, that is all I can think of now. All right. Then, um, if we have uh, any unanticipated items, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Sorry, um, there are letters in your packet um, or letters that were forwarded to you. There's a letter from Ruth Fairman um, expressing views about the um, castaway property owner's proposal that has got some legs in the local media. Um, there are also, um, there's also a letter from our new Senator Paul Mark. Um, just sort of providing us district information and when there are going to be, um, when there are going to be office hours nearby. Um, and there's also in your packet, um, the sort of the annual reporter statement from um, the Fenton County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority in relation to uh, 
Um, the waiting list for um, housing rehab pro uh, housing rehab housing rehab program that the town has um, had in the past. Um, that's we don't that's not really active currently. Um, and then there's also an account with a with a housing rehab loan that the town has there. Um, but they send us this send us this update every year. Yeah, if I remember right, this is um, for uh, folks to do improvements on their homes, um, and they don't have to pay for the it up front. But when they eventually sell the property, that is when they pay the loans back. That's what I'm remembering this is about. So if somebody has some, you know, repair that you urgently need, uh, you may be qualified. Uh, there are some funds, um, and uh, and this would be this would be something to look into if that's a problem that you need to solve. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. All right. That's all. Now that's all. Okay. Then I would accept a motion to adjourn. Live move to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor, Fred. Yes. Julie. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Oh, thanks for sticking it out there, everybody. It was a long meeting, but we got a lot done. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.